Three years have passed since that terrible day when Agatha All Along Episode 1 opens, and she is still physically imprisoned as the sitcom version of Agnes. Though, in her mind, she's starring in her own comedy series, Agnes of Westview, a hard-boiled detective show with opening credits that Riley declare that it's based on the Danish series Wandavistasen. Who among us hasn't relished one or two Scandinavian crime dramas? It makes sense, given that the entire first episode of WandaVision saw Agatha gradually piecing together who Wanda truly is, and the entire series showed her attempting to piece together who Wanda was. Irony is something that creator Jack Schaefer adores. If anything else. It's satire, it does, in fact, spoof, using every cliché from the detective genre. Even while Han's portrayal of a tough, no-nonsense investigator isn't nearly as clever and effective as WandaVision's sitcom homages, it's still a lot of fun to see. In the opening shot, she can be heard humming The Ballad of the Witch's Road, a song that will soon become very familiar, as she makes her way to the murder scene, where we will eventually learn that the deceased woman is none other than Wanda Maximoff, sort of. As with most things in Agatha's life at the moment, it's a mirage. Under the debris of Mount Wondegore, the Scarlet Witch is most likely still where the multiverse of madness left her. However, that should be added to the incredibly long list of things Agatha currently doesn't know. Another brilliant move is the location of the crime scene, which Agatha visits, the woods, where she killed her entire coven and where the witch's road would be. This unchanging environment presents distinct problems that Agatha faces throughout her existence. There are plenty of challenges throughout her Detective Agnes era. It's soon evident that we're dealing with a regular Elliot Stabler here when we learn that she was recently reinstated after serving a suspension for striking a suspect, the cracks in the Agnes facade begin to show just as quickly, with Agatha experiencing strange flashes of recognition and confusion upon seeing certain things, the body's blackened fingers, like what happens after you use the dark hold, and a locket she finds in a nearby puddle depicting a mother, maiden, and crone, complete with a lock of brown hair inside. Who are you? Agatha asks the body. What happened to you? She's asking herself these questions just as much as the dead woman. Han is a phenomenal comedic actor. But these tiny blink and you miss it moments of vulnerability are equally impressive. In some twisted way, you can't help but sympathize with this scheming serial killer and long for her to be able to scheme and serial kill again. Though they play different parts in Agatha's narrative, the Westview residents we met in WandaVision are back. Agnes's colleague is Herb, or John, and the head of police is Phil, or Harold. While Norm or Abilash works in a pawn shop, he is still married to Dottie or Sarah, the librarian. As a result of her inquiry, Agatha encounters each of them and gradually pieces together her own past while pretending to solve the murder. For example, the checkout card she discovers at the murder scene directs her to some stacks that have been set on fire. Destroying every last copy of the book she's seeking for. Only in Eastern Europe is the dirt under the victim's fingernails found. And, is it just me, but does that flannel shirt she wears look suspiciously like a famous 50s dress, along with the Westview citizens we know and love, there are two major new character introductions in the form of Rio Vidal and Teen. Rio enters Agatha's life under the guise of being a federal agent, one Agatha immediately hates. However she acknowledges that she can't recall why. While Rio indulges in the detective show clichés, bringing pizza to Agatha's house and allowing her to share her theories about a car accident in Eastview that might be related to the murder, he also makes an effort to break through Agatha's shell by giving her some wink-wink, nudge-nudge lines. Rio comments, it's almost like she appeared magically. At another moment, she prods, you've lived here your whole life, isn't that true, Agnes? It should also be noted that, right before Rio's arrival at her house, the show also introduces Nicholas Scratch. Sort of. In the comics, Nicholas Scratch is Agatha's son, and it seems like the MCU may be keeping that lore. We briefly see Agatha peek into a child's bedroom, complete with a teddy bear and a plaque reading the name much to unpack. But that's not the young boy we really delve into, 
at least, we don't think it is. After hearing rustling upstairs, Agatha finds a mysterious goth teenager frantically jumping out of her window and attempting to flee. Not keen to let him get away, Agatha chases him down, finally capturing him after Mrs. Hart alias Sharon Davis hits him with her car. Teen is incredibly sassy in the interrogation room, and Agatha is, in turn, incredibly violent, even after Rio, who's looking in on things, warns her to take it down a notch. Teen tells Agatha he broke into her house searching for a road. Which Agatha doesn't understand, just as she doesn't understand the incantation he begins muttering in another language. Instead, she turns the tables on him, showing him gruesome pictures from the crime scene and demanding to know what he was doing at the time of the murder, but it turns out there are no gory photographs at all. Rather, Agatha is showing him pictures of flowers. And the one-way mirror Agatha keeps peering at to look at Rio? It's nothing more than a painting. Frustrated, Agatha throws Teen in a holding cell and heads to the morgue, to look for information regarding the body, and she eventually succeeds. The library checkout card has the name W. Maximoff next to October 13th, Rio then comes to inform her that Wanda and the Darkhold have vanished. She states, in this case, there are two Jane does. What's your name, since you know hers? When an A, Harkness appears where Wanda's name should be, next to January 21st, Agatha becomes hot, breaking free from her spell and ripping off all the many decades worth of clothing we've seen her wear in WandaVision in a rather spooky sequence. At last, Agatha finds herself back at her house, fully naked and utterly helpless, as she quickly learns. This starts a funny chat with poor Herb slash John who covers his eyes and tells her everything she has been up to over the past three years. She has, to start, been far less combative and lucid than she appears to be right now. To put it bluntly, Agatha is furious, referring to Westview as a cesspool, where hope goes to die. When she dashes to her basement, she finds that Wanda has indeed left her with nothing but senior scratchy and household appliances, she hears a thumping in her closet and discovers the goth teenager from the night before. Oops, it looks like that arrest was actually more of a kidnapping. Realization dawns on her, if teen wasn't just a figment of her imagination, then that means Rio wasn't either. Just then. Rio bursts in, destroying a good portion of Agatha's house in the process. She's out for blood, immediately trying to stab Agatha, but Agatha's scrappy, holding her own for a bit despite being powerless. We learn a lot of interesting tidbits throughout this, let's face it, extremely homoerotic fight sequence, Agatha hid behind dark magic for many years, Rio can't kill her because she's not allowed for some reason, and Rio has a black heart that beats for Agatha. These two are going to be deliciously toxic fun to watch together. Before attempting to kill her once more, Agatha persuades Rio to allow her to restore her power. Ultimately, killing her in this condition would be dishonorable, and she enjoys it when Agatha is strong. Rio assures her that although this may be the case, she is not alone in wanting to see her dead, and come dusk, she will be pursued by the most ravenous of them all, the Salem Seven, don't get me wrong, this is an entertaining pilot episode. Watching Han ham it up will never not be a blast, and the writing remains clever with all the Easter eggs scattered throughout. It will no doubt be an even more enjoyable watch after the entire show airs, as I can all but guarantee there is foreshadowing and hints going on in every frame we haven't yet picked up on. But as fun as it is, it also feels a little unnecessary, at least at the moment. The sitcom satire worked so well in WandaVision because it was a continuing theme with a natural progression, but Agatha all along will almost certainly not have that same kind of payoff with the detective show. Dedicating 10 minutes or so to it as a callback gag might have made sense, but spending a good chunk of the pilot in this fake world seems like a slight misstep in terms of pacing. It's almost like when a story ends with, and then it was all a dream. It will likely work better for people who are less familiar with Agatha's character and hazier about the events of WandaVision, as there will be a level of mystery and surprise that's not there for fans who know the show well. Despite how much fun it is, episode 1 feels more like a prologue than a pilot, and one can't help but be excited for the main plot to begin. 
Agatha's discovery of her identity marks the start of the play, and while the build-up to that point isn't entirely pointless, we could have been there a little sooner without missing much. However, 26 minutes doesn't seem all that horrible when you consider that Agatha was imprisoned in Westview for 36 months. Every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Disney, new episodes of Agatha all along air. To watch more video please visit CinemaCap YouTube channel. Full link for this video is given in description box.